So a few months ago, I got a phone call and a voice message from a person that I did not know. His name was Jeff Lanier. And asking if I wanted to discuss a potential project with the orchestra that he was working on at his label. So I called him and we talked about doing a Metallica record, which for me was surprising because I have no background from my personal life or my professional life working with metal music. So we discussed for a long time what the possibilities of that would be with an orchestra. Eventually we decided an all-women orchestra would be the way to go and uh, I could look for my own arranger if I did not want to do the arrangements myself and here we are. Uh, so Christine and I were friends in college and we started working together more after we graduated actually. We hadn't seen each other for a couple of years and I get a random phone call out of the blue uh, to arrange this record and I originally thought it would be taking Metallica's music, which I was pretty familiar with. I'm kind of a closet metal fan. Um, I thought I'd be arranging it for strings and that would be that. Uh, but it took a new life of its own and became a whole different project from what I ever imagined. Pierre Piscatelli was the greatest arranger for this project that I could think of for several reasons. Um, we met years ago when we were at school at NYU. Pierre was studying jazz composition and jazz piano. And when I first got the call for this project, I spoke immediately to my good friend, Katie Jacoby, who is one of the featured soloists on the record. She is, I think, the biggest metalhead I know, and I think the most thoughtful person I know as well. And so when I asked her, I've been thinking about saying yes to this project. I'm not sure if my arranging style would do it justice, you know, who could take this dense, heavy metal record that's so specific to the genre and who could breathe something completely new and beautiful into it? And immediately she said, why don't you ask Pierre? And I thought, yes, of course, I hope he'll do it. And I called him and he was so excited by the chance to completely transform a project into something completely his own. And we got something entirely different than the original album and it's completely beautiful. Yeah, each... Uh... I think I rewrote each arrangement three times. I think uh, I would write it once as, like I said before, a sort of transcription of the music, what I thought it was supposed to be, and then realize that wasn't cool enough. And uh, weird things happen to your brain when you arrange. You don't sleep, you start ordering food three times a day, and just working like nuts, and you get inspired, and it's a, a crazy cycle, a really good one, actually. And all kinds of ideas from other music that I like, something I'd hear on the radio, a noise outside, they pop into your head, you get these sudden bursts, um, sometimes I'd be driving my car and the whole arrangement would pop into my head and I had to pull over and, and sing it into my phone. So wild things like that started to happen, which was cool. The recording style for this project was pretty different than anything I've experienced before. Um, I had recorded in churches here and there over the years, but never with such singular mic placement, you know, playing with more of a room sound instead of what each actual instrument sounds like. Um, when we were recording, it sounded pretty dead in the space, so I think we were all freaking out a little bit. Um, you know, is my instrument okay? Is it too damp? It was hot outside. But once we took a break and could really listen back, we realized that we had so much to play with in terms of the natural reverb of the room and where we were positioned. Um, and we got a completely new sounding project than I think we've ever gotten before. Uh, the, yeah, the recording process was nothing like I imagined. I didn't, um, which I liked, I didn't have any preconceived notions of what it would be or what it should be. Uh, I trusted the process and the people involved. So um, I essentially walked in and was in this huge church in Greenpoint with these beautiful acoustics. And uh, I think my first concern was that there'd be insane amounts of reverb just because of the church and how washy it got. But it's not my department and I didn't worry about it. I trusted it would sound good. And upon hearing the playback, it sounded amazing. The project has four guest vocalists, and they are all incredibly talented artists in their own right. You have Jen Mundia, who has this heavy, deep, soulful voice that sounds like it's coming from the middle of the earth, just bellows out of her. 
and Camille Trust and Alita Moses who have these really transparent, fluid pop voices that are probably, I would say, the opposite of anything that could sound close to Metallica, that really fill in all the cracks and crevices that Pierre's arrangements allowed. And Lauren Desberg, who has such a soft, delicate voice, but somehow when she sings, it's like you can hear it coming through a radio in the 1950s. None of these singers sound anything like what you would think of when you think of metal music. They're feminine, they're delicate, they're powerful, and they really gave a completely new color to the arrangements when we heard them with just the orchestra first. Having an orchestra that consists entirely of women in 2019, I can say, is really a dream come true. Um, when I was growing up and I was in orchestra, it would be 90% boys and a few of us sprinkled in. And when I was younger, I thought, oh, so cool. It's only a couple of us girls in this orchestra. Like, we can be the ones to be here. And then I got older and moved to New York and started playing professionally. And it was still 90% men and just a few of us sprinkled in. And being older and seeing that, I thought that was really odd. And usually now when we're hired outside of orchestral gigs, if it's pop gigs or TV gigs or whatnot, most of the time we're hired because they need some kind of female sex appeal and our opinions don't really matter. When we try to voice our opinions, we're usually talked over by some male MD or keyboard player or bass player and we're not trusted or seen as a musician there, we're just seen as a kind of a prop. So to be surrounded by brilliant women who are talented, who are kind, who care for each other and about each other's opinions and treat each other as co-professionals is incredibly special and really important. Harvester of Sorrow. That might have been my favorite just because that transformed it to something so different uh, I was laughing as I was turning it into a bossa nova with a, this bass line and shaker kind of sound. I thought, what, what's going on here? And it actually ended up being really cool. And I think that was the first tune where I had uh, a turnaround in my brain in terms of inspiration and what this should be and how it should sound. And I really got out of the box. So that was an important one for me. My favorite track on the album would have to be To Live Is To Die. Um, when I first was looking through the album, the title really struck me because it's so true. We are all moving towards our inevitable ending every day. But um, Pierre's arrangement is so delicate and almost religious sounding, like a call to a different place. But I think it's my favorite mostly because we got a chance to feature Katie Jacoby, who is an incredible violin soloist. And Anytime that you can provide a platform for a friend to shine is, I think, the best feeling that there is. I think that when a listener or a fan turns this album on, I think that person can be a Metallica fan, or that person can be an L King fan, or that person can be a jazz fan. Um, you have to go into it pretty open-minded though. It doesn't sound like a classic metal record and it doesn't sound like a classic jazz record or from a classical player point of view, it doesn't sound like an orchestra. It's completely new and different and honors these classic songs in such a new and inviting way that I think anyone can really enjoy it if you're open to enjoying something that you've never heard before. You can find Little Cruta on Instagram at Little Cruta, that's K-R-U-T-A, and you can find us online at www.littlecruta.com. The album is called Justice, and it will be available for your listening pleasure on October 25th, 2019. Download it, stream it, purchase it, whatever you can. <laughs>